So what is done here is trying to develop a very simple, very easy and very transparent method. So please help me evaluate the strengths and the weaknesses by this uh, uh, method that I will show you. So the data is coming from what we call the joint Russian-Norwegian uh, ecosystem survey in the Barents Sea. And each year, we are covering the entire Barents Sea with four ships, one Russian and three uh, Norwegian. And we're doing this during August and uh, September. Same process every year with a standardized set of uh, tools or equipment. So what was new was that um, the bottom troll that we use on this uh, survey uh, was used by the fish people to identify how much fish, particularly the commercial fish, was <coughs> catched by this uh, troll. What we did was adding two benthic experts on board the ship to identify what we call the bycatch. So we did not use another ship, we don't, did not use a gear to collect benthos, we were simply just looking at the bycatch in the troll. So very simple, time and uh, efficient uh, method. What the benthic expert is also doing on the ship, they're identifying the species, they're buying them, they're counting them, so they come back from this cruise with a full uh, sheet of a uh, database. That is then adding to the other years that we was doing this process. So, just showing you some of the baseline results from this type of journey. This is from one year. So, what we see from the Barents Sea with using a benthic fish troll is that we have a large amount of biomass in the northeast <coughs> and in the southwest. We also have a high abundance in the northeast and rather many species in the north. What we also can see is that when we recalculate all this biomass according to each of these species, that we have a high production, standard production in the northeast compared to the uh, southwest. And when we go into the species, composition, we do have four regions of communities, one blue up here, the northeast, which I now will call the Arctic community, we have a red one down here that I will call the boreal community, and then we have a green one here and a yellow one here. So the species composition is reflecting these four main regions. So. The new work that we are going into identifying now is when we add pressures on this, how will these communities react to that? What we know is that, uh, what we then use is the data all the way back to 2009, giving more than 2,000 stations. So it's a huge amount of data that we can look into and knowing that the Barents Sea, particularly the northern part, is subjected to some of the most or the hardest temperature increases, and that it is particularly in the northern part of the Barents Sea. So this is the first stressor that we are looking at, the temperature increase. So how does an increased temperature act on a community? Well, it will have a negative impact on the Arctic species. It will have a positive impact on the boreal species that is starting to spread. So if we then are looking at a troll catch, identifying the species who are uh, having a cold distribution within a narrow range, and also the other species from the other end having a warm temperature distribution without a wide range, we can kind of code these species, taking the mean of the entire community within this troll, and then plot that on the map. In this case, it is also stacked by year, so we are taking the average during many years, and we see that we have an Arctic and a boreal distribution of species 
through all through the community. So, the next treasure is bottom trawling. And if we study this map, we will see that if we take a early period and compare that to a later period up to today, we will see that the red spot is more intense fishing. So fishing impact or bottom trawling is migrating northward. And this is, is explained by commercial fish migrating northward too. So this is then the western part of the Barents Sea that is impacted particularly by trawling. If we are looking at the northeast with the high production, the high abundance, the high biomass, and the high number of species, these areas are not trawled. So if we are asking the community who are vulnerable to what trawling, it will be those species who are standing upraised on the seabed, having a big body that is not easily seeped out through the mesh size of the trawl. So you are easily caught by the trawl and you cannot get out. On the other side of the community, you have the small species lying flat on the seabed. If they are caught, they are seeped out through the nets. So by this, you can rank your species according to the height, their bite, and their mo mobility. And you can then rank them and take the mean of the whole community per station. And again, you can stack them above each other. Sorry, this is examples of the species that we consider as vulnerable. And you can then rank them during years, and you will see that you have the green, robust areas in the central part of the barren seed, meaning that you have a lot of small, low species here. Around that, surrounding the kind of intermediate um, uh, communities, and then in the outer part of these areas, the hot spots where we do find the upraised large sessile organism. So let's look at the third stressor. In this case, we look at the snow crab, who's a new species within the Barents Sea, and is eating prey from the seabed. It's particularly in the eastern part of the sea that we have the spreading of the snow crab per today. And it is small prey species that the snow crab is eating. So if we identify all the possible prey that we catch with this troll, take the bite and then show during years where we do find the most of these prey species, this is how the map looked like. So now we have looked at climate change. How does that impact the community of fencers? We have looked at trolling. How does that impact the community of fencers? And we have been looking at the snow crab, asked ourselves, how does this impact the uh, benthic community? <coughs> now we might ask ourselves, what are other species who are both vulnerable to, uh, or to two of these uh, impacts. And we might look at trolling. And we know that it's the upraised big sessile species who are the vulnerable. If we add the temperature, it is the Arctic species. And if we add these two things together, it is the large Arctic sessile species who are the very most vulnerable. If we do the same for the snow crab, it's the small prey species. If we add the temperature, it's the Arctic small benthic species that is the vulnerable one. So if you go into your data matrix for each of these stations and just pull out the big Arctic one and the small Arctic one and you plot that on your map, you will have a distribution of all the Arctic large bodies that are vulnerable to what trolling and all the smalls that are vulnerable to what snow crab predation. And then you can say, well, in the north, we have the climate impact, but 
Trolling is going northward also, so it's meeting the climate region. And the snow crab is migrating eastward, leading both to climate change and the trolling, meaning that this area will be impacted by a multiple set of impact factors. So the conclusion will be that if you want to sustain a rich and healthy authentic community, you have to do reduce bottom trawling according to the temperature increase. And you also have to increase the commercial catch of snow crab with traps, not with trawls. In the areas of Barency, that is affected by these multiple uh, stress factors. But in order to find a critical level to where you have to take action to prevent more trawling and so on, you have to establish a closed area and you have to do science in order to find out what are temperature doing, the natural fluctuation with this community to be able to split between what is done by trawling, what is done by predation from the snow crab and what is done by temperature. So you have critically to evaluate the large scale results that you get. So I took this block of information and I dumped it into the one of the reports that Wolf was um, presenting yesterday and you might ask me what happened. So these results from the Baron C is now integrated in the CBMP report that will come very soon. Not what the whole analysis that has been made here. But yesterday we saw was told that Canada is doing the same, adding Bentic expert on their fish assessment sheet. Um, Iceland was also telling that they are doing it now. They have done it or really started off this year. Greenland has done it now for two years, and the Faroe Islands was hopefully start to do that next year. And by this method, and if we can add NOAA's troll survey in this area too, except that the US is pulling out of this group now, which is a catastrophe. But, but if we can compare data on a climatic scale using simple methods as, as this, then each countries can take their own responsibility and show their data, and we can add them into this panactic map. And then I think that the distance between the data keeper who knows the crappy data that you have and the user of these data will not be too far. It will be under control. So each nation needs to take responsibility for their own data and add them in this common map. So there's this sample report um, all the results from all the six um, expert groups, where Bentic uh, is one of them, it will come out next year in April, May. So, thanks to the Russian Norwegian uh, joint uh, effort on the ecosystem survey, and uh, also the, the budget given from the Institute IMR and PIMRO, so we can run this. Uh, and thank you for me to having the possibility to give this talk. So.